feel like too. Mm -hmm. Big. Okay, can you mute yourselves if, um, please? All right, lovely, we are now being recorded and we are also live on YouTube. So you can share the YouTube link with your friends. I will put it in the chat. Yes, and as I was saying before, I am Davina Gail Harris, and since October this year, I have resigned, retired my position at Newbold College as their head chef and menu coordinator. So I have been their head chef and menu coordinator for the past four years, since 2016. Prior to that, I worked as the one, firstly, managing a manager, general manager, for one of the Caribbean Sea Super restaurants. And then I moved up to their operations manager and then operations director. I also run and operated my own um, food business where I used to produce um, vegan cakes, vegan Caribbean cakes for um, restaurants, as well as their vegan option on their menus, their vegan meat option on their menus. Uh, prior to that, I worked with, for those who may know Ask Restaurant Limited, I worked with the Gondola Group on the Ask Restaurant as a assistant manager for, um, supervisor assistant manager, general manager for about five years or so. Prior to that, I was with the Park Club in very similar position. Before that, I was in Jamaica as a supervisor and a manager for a catering company. Prior to that, I was in university studying <laughs> hospitality management, which does take in a whole lot of catering, as well as the nutritional aspect um, side of things. And I did study with um, Northern Caribbean University, and I also specialized in vegetarian catering when I was there. That was my specialty. Here I am now. I own and operate my own um, ministry, which is taking the health message from your kitchen, basically optimizing you to really put in the, your knowledge of health and nutrition into practicality. Because I know many times we may go to a lot of health seminars and we will hear that, okay, whole grains are good for you, beans are good for you, flax seeds is good for you, but you go home after that, and yes, you know that all these things are good for you, but you're not sure exactly how to incorporate them in your diet to really make life still interesting so you don't run out of steam along the way or change your mind along the way because many who have started the journey has returned to Egypt because they've gotten bored. Some have also become malnourished um, because they, they've just run out of, just don't know what to eat. They eat the same thing every day. Beans, they will eat stew peas. Every time they prepare beans, it's either in rice and peas or in stew peas or, you know, just very, the, the very same thing all the time. Um, they don't know how to make creative ways of using some of these ingredients. Now, um, the course, Transition Nutrition slash Vegan Nutrition was designed based off my own personal journey. So I used to be a size UK 22, 24. Not sure what size that is in um, the US and um, Jamaican size, but basically it was very big. I used to weigh, um, when I started after I started my health journey, when I weighed, I remember I was 200 pounds, but 
um, I had already started losing a little bit of weight when I when I had got myself weighed at that time. And I went to do a, um, a colon cleanse, hydrotherapy colon cleanse, and uh, they weighed me. I was 220 pounds at that time. And today, I am a size A10. And that was 2013. I was um, at that size. So I transformed from a rich meat eating, someone who was addicted to coffee. Doctors tried to take me off coffee a number of times. Um, McDonald's and KFC knew me very well. My breakfast would be something like curry goat with fried dumpling. Then my, and that would be my, the one that I call my breakfast because before breakfast, I would normally go to McDonald's and have a McDonald's breakfast. And that would um, consist of the McDonald's wrap with a cup of coffee. And then now by the time I get to my place of work, I would have some curry goat with fried dumpling for my proper breakfast. And uh, my lunch would be something like oxtail with rice and peas. And then my supper would be something like a jerk chicken salad, uh, which would be a half of a jerk chicken <laughs> with some lettuce and cucumber and tomatoes, which sometimes I don't remember if I get around to the salad or maybe I did. And um, that would be topped off with a banana crepe dessert and maybe a glass of cocktail or a glass of wine or something like that. So I was on a very rich flesh diet and um, I was going down the hill in terms of my health. I had a lot of diseases. I suffered from angina, sleep apnea. I mean, I don't even remember all some of the things now, but I mean, there's like a whole list of things I used to suffer from. Um, and until, you know, the Lord was speaking to me and I kept telling myself, if I don't change, I'm not gonna, I don't have much longer to live because either I'm gonna get cancer. I was also um, diabetic. So I was saying either I'm gonna get cancer, or I'm gonna die from a heart attack or something like that. So I had to, I came to a reality check, but at that time I didn't know that I was, um, diabetic but i knew i was a high risk factor because of my size i was well very obese and um my middle area was very big my waist was very big and um but in terms of being diagnosed i was not and i wasn't even really aware sorry sweating a bit here i wasn't really aware so much of it either um but then a reality check came when my partner at the time who we ate the very same foods and similar size and everything he um started climbing through his window one night hallucinating and you know literally just going a little bit mental they took him to the hospital and he was diagnosed with um, type 2 diabetes and then it dawned on me, you have to change like yesterday. Um, you have to throw out those um, shortbread cookies out of your bag that you walk around with. <laughs> you have to change how you eat. You have to change how you live. Otherwise, you're going to be next in line. I was already there, but um, I didn't know. Now, I started changing how I do things. I um tried to exercise but i couldn't do much because i had serious pain in my chest area so you know it really affected my breathing when i had to go to work i used to um oversee one restaurant in westfield shopping center in stratford city and when i had to climb up those stairs so if i should when i'm going to work if if the escalator is not working i would dread it because for me to go up the stairs, I would I would have to take one step at a time. So I would have to step, rest, step, rest, step, rest. That was the only way I could get to the top of the stairs without having a heart failure. One second.
Yeah, so, um, so I couldn't do much in terms of exercise because I couldn't cope with the breathing. Um, I had some massive blotches all over my skin that I used to have to plaster with makeup to cover it. And um, I remember, I think it was 2013 October, I went to I went to my friend's house, I think. Um, I went to, to her house, but as when I got there, the family was going out to a photo shoot. And I, I decided, let's just go, let's just have the drive and go with them. When I got there, you know, they say, come on, come on, take some pictures as well. So of course I went and I took some pictures as well. Now when the pictures were ready and the lady sent the link and I viewed the pictures, I could not um, print not even one of those pictures, not that I couldn't afford to print the pictures, but um, the pictures were horrendous. I, I did not know, I never saw myself like that before. Um, I filled up the whole camera, the blotches that I was covering with makeup, the camera just showed everything up. You could see all the black spots in my chest you could see them just the same under all the concealer and everything. Um, so, you know, you put makeup on and you look in the mirror, you actually don't see these flaws, but the camera just picks up everything, highlighted it. And then I took some picture with um, my nephews and uh, when I looked at them, they looked like brass hop hoppers, um, you know, sitting around me. I was just so massive. And I thought, no, I can't keep any of this. I never thought about keeping it as evidence, you know, that um, when I go down, I could have that to show. But um, I was just too humiliated and embarrassed at that time to really um, do that. I remember once I went out, you know, I went out to, to the movies, right, with my friend and uh, I was in the queue and I, you know, I wore one of them belts that you, it has like the elastic, elastic belt, like those big broad belts that would be about, you know, this, this kind of width. And then you just pin them at the front like that. Right. I, 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 I wore one of those belts and I remember I was in the queue and look, I fight to get myself in that belt before I left. So I could have some sort of ways to look nice. And I remember I was in the queue, uh, we were getting popcorn and the bell just flew off. <laughs> and it dropped us at another man's feet. It was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. And I thought I have to change, you know, I cannot continue the way how I was going. And uh, I decided, you know, I was before, even before that, I was taking a lot of um, supplements. So everything that is sold on the market to help you lose weight, mm -hmm. I would invest in it. So if you had an old water boot, you know, Wellingtons that you wanted to get rid of, just cut it up, put it in a bottle and tell me that it will help me to lose weight and I would have purchased it, right? But what I was doing, I was trying to, the, the shortcut, I was going all, through all the shortcut methods and, and they weren't really working. I remember I used to take this Chinese tea. When I took the tea, I had to lie down in my bed and I would have to hold on to the head of the bed because I was spinning like a gig even though I was in my bed. It used to give me such terrible headaches. Um, I remember that I did even um, liposuction, laser lipo, and I lost a couple of inches and I don't know if it lasted two weeks or a month. By the time I finished the whole course, um, I don't know, I think maybe I had two weeks of weight loss and then I don't know where it went. Don't know what happened to it. Um, I, I, I did everything. I used all sort of cream on my skin. I all sort of berry, everything sold. I bought it and I would take it religiously just to lose weight and it just was not budging because my body was also so full of toxin that you know, I needed a complete overall, but when you don't have guidance and you don't know, you try to fix yourself. So um, I decided, I, I remember I was talking to some friends and then um, one of them 
she was talking about she had done a colon a hydrotherapy colon cleanse and she said it was very good and so all stuff came out of her but you know she found it a bit invasive so anyway i decided i was going to give that a try so i searched around until i found this clinic in harley street and i um you know i did a consultation with them and they put me on some things to do and then i went in and i did my hydrocolon cleanse and they gave me some prebiotics and probiotics and put me on a water program to help me to reverse the black blotches um, from my body and my tongue I had high level of um, yeast build up overgrowth in my body as well and you could see it on my tongue and you've got that white um, plaque on the tongue so you know they put me on a water program that they said to me would help me to reverse that and it did it did I don't even know how long um, I was doing it for, but when they, the program that they put me on, it was like for every 50 pounds you weigh or 25 kilos, you need to drink a liter of water. So I was supposed to be drinking 4.75 liters of water for the day. Now I can tell you that in itself is a massive drama because it's a lot of water and when I was assessed, right, I was um, assessed to have been drinking something like, I think a tablespoon of water per day. So that is what my diet used to be like in terms of water. I drank more wine, coffee and teas than anything else, you know? So my life was, my health was going down the drain and um, I was fully responsible for it because of the, um, the lifestyle that I, that I had chosen. Now, I decided to follow through with the water program and I did. And as I said, I just remember one day looking in the mirror and uh, I did not have the blotches on my, on my skin anymore. And the whiteness on my tongue uh, also cleared up. So it worked, it helped, it worked, but I, and I had actually, I had actually started losing weight, but I still was nowhere near where I am at today or where I was supposed to be even in terms of health. However, I got to the point where I could exercise a little bit more and I started exercising, I think 2014, and I exercised for a whole, almost a whole year, but I still didn't really lose any weight. Um, I remember I lost five pounds which is like two and a half kilos, right? That's all I lost in a whole year. And I remember I motivated many people to exercise by just sending out my pictures and little videos and stuff to my friends. And I would get them motivated and they would start the exercise routine with me in the mornings. And then, um, you know, everybody was reporting, oh, after a week, I've lost so much weight and it feels so good. And I'm thinking, they have lost so much weight. I remember when my friend told me she lost four kilos in two weeks because I started the exercise program with myself. And I'm thinking, and I've only lost five pounds. And then I got so depressed. I remember that day I literally just broke down and I started crying so badly because I just couldn't lose the weight. But I did not understand then about the toxins in my body, right? It was a toxin overload. And I was sweating a lot when I exercised. I was sweating a lot and I was feeling much improved in terms of health and um, the heart pain had resided, subsided a bit. It was not as much and I was able to manage to do some level of exercise. Um, but I, the, the weight was just not going. Five pounds is not, is not a lot of weight for a whole year. Anyway, I got really depressed and I stopped exercising October 2014. 2014, I stopped exercising and um, I started then no, I mean, before that I was an atheist, but at that point, or not an atheist, an agnostic, but at that point I somehow started praying and I started asking the Lord to help me to lose the weight and to change my life, right? Um, and he did, he did, and he did change my life. I am now a fully fledged member in the faith, as most of you or some of you may know. Um, and uh, my whole weight, everything changed, everything completely changed. I now follow the health message, teaches it, went back to school to study um, 
and naturopathic nutrition um, at a tertiary level. And um, I know, I am now a, I don't know if you can see what you can see. I am now a size 18, reversing my diseases, all of them as a result of change um, in my lifestyle. And what I wanna show you today is, so a lot of people, when they start the journey, they, as I said, they reverse, they return to Egypt, right? Um, because they've run out of ideas of what to cook and how to really enjoy things. They can't enjoy a good dessert. So for, as a little taste session, right? towards a cooking course, which I'm encouraging you all to sign up on because you learn so much, you won't run out of ideas anymore. Today, we're gonna do a vegan cheesecake. Oh yeah, can you mute all the microphones please? Because it's making a lot of um, little background sounds. So I'm gonna show you how to make a vegan cheesecake, right? Um, two types, I'm gonna show you how to make two types of vegan cheesecake. Let's see if you can see my work surface. Uh, yeah, you can see up to my blender. All right, that's good. So, all right, the first one, I'm gonna make the base of the cheesecake first. And I'm gonna use, I've got here some raw almond nuts, right? And um, I don't know, this is a little packet, maybe about, doesn't even tell you how much grams, over 114 grams. Let's see, it's probably about a cup. Yeah, so it's just about one cup of almond nuts. And I'm gonna powder this, I'm gonna ground this to a powder. I've got water in my blender here. Well, not a powder, but a rough um, chop, roughly chop it. To this, I'm gonna add, I've got here about a cup of dates. So you want your dates to be soft, right? And pliable, a bit like this. Yeah, you want nice, soft, pliable dates. And if they're not, if they're dry and hard, you could put them, pour a little hot water in them and soak them for about 10, 20 minutes and they will um, become pliable again. All right, so I'm adding the dates to that. To this, I'm gonna add a pinch of cinnamon. You know, a little pinch will do, just to add a little extra uh, flavor there. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit of a pinch of cinnamon and salt. I'm gonna give this another blend. You can use a food processor, and in your house, if you want to go ahead and give it a try, please do. It feels strange. Well. A good sign. I hope the blender still works after this to finish the job at least, but I think it just got a little bit burned. All right, and to this, I'm gonna add about a spoon of coconut oil. I should have one that's open. So 
find my open cooker. Okay, I found it. So your um, cold compressed coconut oil should look congealed. And this is still a little bit runny. I'm just gonna add a tablespoon, well, a little bit more, more than a tablespoon. But a tablespoon is enough. Let's make sure that this is sitting properly. Well, I'm not getting this to move much, but maybe it's because it's already quite, that's what you to see the texture of it. It looks like a bit like breadcrumbs, but when you squeeze it together, it should be holding together like this, right? So that's the consistency that you are looking for. Can you let someone come in here? So what I've got here, and if you're gonna have something like a party, or you're gonna have a lot of family or so over that you wanna entertain, and you just wanna have little individual packets, you just um, can put about a handful in each. Then um, you're pressing down. Just want to use your finger to press it down. So these are just little um, dessert cups that I've got here. And for some people, they like the base of their cheesecake thick. Some like it thin. You don't really want a base that is too thin because you don't really get that much joy out of it when you eat it. And not only that, but sometimes the, the, the butter can soak through. It gets soggy really easily if the base is too thin, all right? So a handful, two handfuls, you know, a handful and a half should about um, do it. And because I'm putting it in these little cups, right, which is a individual cup size that um, I don't need to grease it. I don't need to put grease proof paper or anything like that in it. However, if I was going to do a pan like this, I, as you can see, it's already ready with some grease proof paper in it, which I would just lift it out. Or you can use a spring foam pan. That's the one with the little latch at the side where you can open this, open the side of it to remove it from the cheesecake, right? I'll just add a tiny bit more to this one. And the, the, this tastes very nice, by the way, the base itself. And you can bring the base up all the way, right? Like just press it to the sides and then just bring it right all the way up to the top. You can do it that way. It's up to you, right? Um, I'm leaving that one a little bit halfway there. I'm just getting out the rest of the 
the rest of my dough, which I'll put up for a bit later. Okay. And so the first cheesecake I'm gonna do is a cashew no bake cheesecake. So I've got one cup of cashew here, but I soaked it, right? I soaked it first. And Cashew is a very versatile nut that is used a lot in um, vegan catering, especially in desserts, right? Um, when you soak it, you will find that it gets much softer and it becomes a little bit, um, it's swollen a little bit as well, right? But in terms of flavor, it's very mild, it's very neutral, it's easy to flavor, and it gives a really nice, smooth texture. So what we're gonna do here, I'm putting, um, my cup of cashew. I've got right here some coconut milk. I'm gonna add salt to coconut milk, but before I even add it, and, and this is homemade coconut milk, by the way. So I, um, here's my coconut that I huxed out and I just chopped it up fine in my blender, blended it and then strained it. And um, you have your coconut milk. I'm using some to cook my rice and peas over there. And then I'm gonna use some in this, in this recipe today. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make as well a little bit of, um, so what I've got here, I'm gonna use some corn starch, right? Or corn flour in my recipe for my cashew cheesecake. And I'm gonna tell you what is the difference between cornstarch and corn flour. And I want you to be very careful when you're using just to ensure that you don't buy the wrong thing. So corn flour and cornstarch, the names are often used interchangeably. So I've got here corn flour. And I just want you to look at it. I hope you can see it well. It's very white. It's like pure white. It says corn flour on the bag, but you will find in some countries, it depends on where you are, you may find corn flour being yellow. You may find corn starch being white. Now you are looking for, they have different culinary uses. The corn starch, which is what I've got here, Right in my country in Jamaica, this is called corn starch. However, where I bought that bag in the UK, it is called corn flour. Now the corn flour is a whole corn kernel, but the corn starch is just the endosperm and it's just a starch bit, and they have different culinary uses. So what you want for the recipe is corn, the white one that is pure milk white. That's what you're looking for. Once it is yellow. That is not what you want. Give me a moment. I've got my rice and peas on over here. All right, so I'm going to use um well this is about to be honest it's probably about two tablespoons because it's quite big a tablespoon would normally be it's supposed to be leveled off right so if the recipe says two tablespoons you want to have a level tablespoon so i'm using two and a little so this would be more like um what is a real tablespoon right so i'm using let's say about two to three tablespoons of cornstarch. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix it, mix the milk. I'm gonna use some of the milk to mix it. And I'm gonna just use a little whisk. 
and you mix it with cold liquid first. Yeah, mix it with cold liquid. Until it is nicely dissolved. And then you can warm it or you add it now to the hot stuff. So if you want to thicken things like sauces, soups, gravies, stews, you mix it out like this and then you add it to the warm stew close to the end of the cooking process. And even though it's white, it does not alter the color of your dish, right? So the color of your dish remains the same, but it does give it a nice thickening consistency without any lumps. So there you go, it's nicely mixed. And I'm gonna put this on the fire. Sorry, you can't see the fire. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to try to reset the camera and everything. And while that is warming up, I'm gonna just add some, a little bit of coconut oil, right? And I've got, this is a half cup size, but let me use a quarter cup. I'm using about a quarter cup of coconut oil here. And what the coconut oil does is it really helps it to set. When it is time for it to set, you know when coconut oil gets cold, it congeals. So it really helps it to set. And the cornstarch, I have to keep stirring it, otherwise it gets too thick and cannot be moved. I'm just setting it aside a second there. And I'm gonna cover this. So I'm just gonna blend it and I'm hoping it works now. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this milk to it. Just giving an eye on my cornstarch over here, which is on a low flame. All right, so I'm going to add a bit more milk to this. I don't want to put too much milk in total, maybe about a cup will be used, but I need to make it nice and creamy. I want it to be nice and creamy. want you to see the consistency of this. Just a couple of people waiting. Okay, I'm back. So the consistency, you see it's quite thick, it's quite creamy, even though I could get it smoother, but I'm gonna be blending it more because I've been adding a bit more ingredients to it, including the cornstarch. So what I'm gonna add here now to it is, I've got limes. Now my limes, they're pretty small. However, they're very juicy, right? It's, 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 there, it's hardly any skin. 
it's just mostly juice. And I'm just gonna put my strainer over it so I can catch the seeds. So normally I would use about one to two tablespoons of maybe lemon juice if you're in the UK. But I'm gonna use two limes here. So it helps it, this helps it with the curdling, right? And it also helps it to set and to give you a nice um, consistency as well. Okay. And to this, I've got agave nectar. So this is a plant-based syrup, right? Um, you can just add maybe about 150 milliliters of sweetener. And I'm not gonna put too much. That's enough right there. And to this, you can add a little bit of vanilla extract or vanilla essence. Well, I found some, I believe, some flavor, artificial flavor in here, which I just add a little. All right, I'm gonna blend this a little bit more and then I'm gonna add my corn starch. Okay, it's looking really nice and smooth. I just like to see this um, consistency. Wow. So are you seeing? I don't know if you get the best light in this way. Yes. Yeah, good. It's very, very smooth. And I'm just going to give it a little cheat taste. Mm. Oh, wow. I'm behind the cameras, you can't see this. Mm. <laughs> now, here's my cornstarch, right? Let me get a spoon again. Here it is. So it's still a little bit runny, but it's much, it's getting thick. I'm gonna put it back to the heat, but I just wanna tell you a little bit about this, right? So normally with the cheesecake, you use what is called um, agar agar, right? Which is something like a gelatin replacement, but a vegan gelatin replacement, plant, it's plant-based. You normally use it. Now, oftentimes it's sometimes very hard to find the agar agar and it's, can also be a little bit pricey. Now, for a lot of recipes, they may call for both agar agar as well as the either tapioca, cornstarch, or corn flour, or some other form of starch which helps with the emulsification process. So, what the emulsification process is, it's when it combines the oil with the water, right? Um, in this particular recipe, I am only gonna use the cornstarch. However, when you are doing it, you could use one little sachet of agar agar as well, right? Which is about, maybe about 50 grams in one little sachet. I got, the last time I got some to buy, it was in weight row. So a little packet cost, I think close to like five pounds, right? Now, if you can, I, I couldn't get it in Holland and Barrett, but I've had, students that have found it in Holland and Barrett. Now I'm using just a cornstarch and I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker because I'm not using the agar agar in it. And it will help the cheesecake to set 
nice and uh, firm, right? This is a no-bake cheesecake. So I'm just gonna put this cornstarch back on the heat to make it thicker. And then I'm gonna quickly add it to the blender and blend it up before it becomes like a cake-like pie. So I'm just adding a little heat to it, turning up the flame, adding a little bit more of this milk to it as well. And I just have to keep whisking it. Okay, so it's changing consistency a bit to, don't know if you can see this. Yep, and I'm putting it in it quickly. Let's see if I'll get all the bits out of this one. So you see how that got nice and thick? Look, look at it. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to lose it some of it. And I'm going to put this back on my blender. Rich and creamy. Then get me all the way up to the top. Then I'm gonna knock it down. Just get out any additional air bubbles. This one may be a little bit too much because I was hoping to get something on the top, but for that one, we will not put anything on the top because it's been off as it is. All right, let's. And what I'm going to do, I've got another cup here without any base, so I'm just going to put it in this glass. And if you've got some strawberries, some sort of fruit, right? that's really nice and bright in color like your berries, please feel free to, I've got a bees just trying to take over. Please feel free to um, add some fruits in the mixture. Yeah, I'll just grab some more cup. Okay. I've got now, what I've got here is some coolies I've already made. Now I'm just gonna warm this up a bit, but I just want to show you something. You see that? Yeah? 
that's like a jelly. So what this is, I'm just gonna tell you how I make this because I've got not, no more fruit to make another one from scratch. So I will tell you what I did. You can use your blueberries or your strawberries or any berries that you would like. And uh, I blended up, what I have here is some, what they call ribena berries. I blended them up with some water and you can always use um, some juice if you have some sort of juice to blend it, you can always blend it with some juice. So I blended mine with some water. Yeah, I blended mine with some water. And then I strained it. Then I strained it and then I add, because that right being a berry, the berry, um, it's got a beautiful color, but it's actually, because I blended it with the seeds, it was actually quite bitter. A little bit bitter. So I added some agave with it and I added um, some ginger and I added, um, I may have added ginger, um, something like clove. And uh, I heated it, I cooked it down for a few minutes on the cooker and I mixed in some of the cornstarch to thicken it, right? So that and the lemon or lime. So I've got this here, I'm just gonna put it on the fire to loosen it. Now you can use a gov um, agar agar, right? This is it. Wow, I'm being taken over by a beast inside here because of the sweet. You know, with all the rains we've been having in Jamaica, it's displaced the ecosystem a bit. Oh boy. So all the blossoms have been knocked off the tree. As a result, the bees are finding their ways inside homes looking for pollen. And now I'm using all this sweet stuff So I'm just going to loosen that and I'm going to put this mixture in another cup. I've got all, all my other clear glass cups already in the fridge. Oh, here's one. Oh, I need to save that for, for the other one. So getting the rest of this out. So I'm just mixing this um, coolis with a spoon to loosen up the lump. As it heats up, it um, loosens. Okay. So here we go. This is it now. It's all nice and, and loose and it's warm. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pour it on the top of this. And this smells really Christmassy because it has the ginger and it has the the spice, a little bit of spice is in it, so it smells really Christmassy. It's, it's so full that I'm not going to put anything at the top, otherwise it's probably going to run over. But look, you can see it's already set in. And then I'm going to put these in the fridge and I'm just going to show you what the finished product should look like. All right, just bear me one more moment.
Yeah, I just went outside to get some fresh mint to decorate this. And this is one of the finished product. I'm gonna cut it nicely for you. So you can see, so I'm gonna stick some fresh mint in that one. That one. And then from the little, from the base, the mixture from the base that I've got a little left over, just gonna use a little bit of it to garnish this one. All right, so I'm just literally just putting it to one side towards the edge. Create a nice little semi circle. Okay, and we're gonna stick this in the fridge and this is how it will cut when it comes out. So are you there? So look, th this is it, right? It holds. This is just in the fridge. So you leave it in the fridge to set for 24 hours. And there you go. So I'm just gonna take this up with my hand. So you can see it's nicely holds together. It's not falling apart. A lot of times when you see cheesecake, the inside is a little bit soft and wetty. So this is the, the cashew cheesecake, this one, and it tastes very good. I made so many of them, my neighbors keep enjoying them. And I've sprinkled some nuts on the top of this one as a garnish. So you could give this one a try. Now, there's one more, and what I've got here, I'm going to show you in a second. I need an assistant, whoever is nearby who wants to help, come by. I'm going to put these in the fridge. And there was this one. So what this is, I'm going to cut this one and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So this on the top is what they call coffee alternative. Um, there's whole earth. I don't know if you know this. So this is what I have on the top of this. So how I make this now, I use some soya single cream and I mix that with the coffee alternative with a little bit of agar agar or corn starch can use. And this is the texture. And I want you to see, let's see if I could do a little test with this by turning it out on my cutting board. Okay. Can you see this? I'm gonna pick this up with my hand. Can you see that sort of texture? You see that jiggly and wobbly? You can talk back to me, you know, don't let me talk to myself. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Right, so to get this kind of cheesecake texture, I'm gonna show you now how you make this one. And I call this a jiggly cheesecake. And the flavor is amazing. 
So I don't want this to go to waste, so I'm gonna eat it. Mm. You're not allowed to eat while you're cooking. I know, but I'm hungry. <laughs> and even if I wasn't hungry, I can't help myself with these desserts. All right, I'm just gonna get these all the way and put them in the fridge. We give her a pass, uh, but we do. <laughs> no. <clears throat> can't let good things go to waste, innit? <laughs> <laughs> She's cooking for her neighbors. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have a couple of neighbors that want to change um, their lifestyle. So one, one I think yes, I think she has forgotten, but I don't know her number. So she she wanted to come this morning. She said she was gonna come. Now I'm putting this out the way. This is the base. I need to get this out, this blender. And put it into something else. Let's use this. There goes something interesting. This is the piece of rubber that is supposed to be in my blender. Oh <laughs> boy. You can always use this whole mixture, I believe may fit into an eight inch um, baking pan. This whole mixture that I've used with a one cup of the one cup of um, cashew nuts. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure about that. I will double check my recipe book and um, let you know at a later date, but it may be a bit more cashew nuts that's needed, but I try to, I have to make it stretch here in Jamaica, you know? It's not like when I was in England and I could just take a 500 grams of cashew I just make a cheesecake that sits in the fridge, hoping for somebody to eat it. No, we have to be a bit more frugal out here because the nuts are very expensive when you do get them here and you get just a tiny amount. And that's when you get them. And for the base of the cheesecake, just to let you know that you can always use oats. Um, so I've used oats before we have mixed the oats with, with nuts and I've used peanuts as well before as the base of my cheesecake. In fact, I've used peanuts as well for the cheesecake itself. And I've also used, I can't tell you, I've actually used lentils as well, the red one and it works. It actually tastes good. It's just a matter of how you season them. All right, so I will rinse this out. Okay, now we will get the piece of rubber back in that was supposed to have been there. Let's see now, how do I do this, this way? This way. Okay, so, you know, I'm fairly new to this blender. So, yeah, doesn't seem like I'm getting it right so far. Is it just this or okay, maybe just like that? Can someone let him sister tell me for me, please? And sorry, I have to give my station a little wipe. I know um I was 
should be moving a little bit faster, but bear with me today. Okay. Should have had my little helper girl here. She has decided to hide out today. All right, so for this one now, I'm gonna use the agar agar. Right. Um, so I've got a um, a box of this is about 300. It says 350 grams, basically, of silk and tofu. You don't have to use this brand because I have never ever seen this brand before. Um, I only just bought this brand today, right? But what you want for this recipe? Okay. All right. So, um, what you, <laughs> what you want is silk and tofu, right? For this recipe, silk and tofu. I don't know how well the other tofus does this recipe, but, um, just give the silk and tofu a try for this recipe. And I've got here the extra firm, but I don't normally pay, I just notice it's extra firm. I don't normally pay attention to this. I just, just buy silk and tofu for this recipe. And you're gonna steam the tofu for about five minutes. So I'm gonna turn my camera. Oh, okay, no, I'm just gonna bring it over and show you. I've steamed it already. So here, I've got my tofu in the basket, right? And I've steamed it up. So I, while I had my rice and peas cooking, I had it over it steaming. So there goes my steamed tofu, right? And I'm just gonna drop them in my blender. recipe I use as well some soya cream soya single cream and this you can make for yourself um but again you can just go to the supermarket and buy it right so I've got here a all pro single And I'm just gonna add, it says 150 mils normally, but yeah, I don't even know if it's so much. Okay, 254, all right. So I'm just using some of the box. Okay, and this is the agar, agar. Just gonna take one out so you can see. I believe one sachet should be about 50 grams. All right, and let's see if I find a small pot. So oh, to this, I'm going to add my agar agar. Oh, I already took one out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, see. So it feels, if yours feel a little bit hard in the packet, don't worry about it. Just as long as you open it and get it out, because once you add the water to it and start mixing it out, you will be fine. So that's... Uh, 
Oh boy. I'm competing with space for space in my kitchen with the bees. All right. So that's it. I'm going to add, I'm going to use a measuring cup so you can see. This is about a quarter cup of water. I'm going to be adding to it. And uh, I'm just using the regular tap water here. Yeah, so about a quarter cup, and I just need a little spoon. See, it's, um, I missed the beginning of the recipe. So this is, this is what I've got here, right? So the beginning of this recipe is one pack of silken tofu and you steam it up. So you can put it in, just put it in a colander over a big pot with water and cover it, right? Or you can put it in your strainer, again, over a pot and cover it. But um, you want one pack of um, tofu for this recipe and you want one agar agar. I'm gonna blend this tofu with the about 150 ml of soya single. Where's the cover for the blender? <laughs> All right. Just want you to see. So you keep seeing the texture of this as it goes along. Nice and silky already. Again, I'm going to add lemon. I don't want to lose any of my tofu on this spatula. So I've got another one and a half lemons here. So maybe, yeah, one and a half to two. I mean, this is lime I have, and my limes are very juicy. I probably get almost the same amount of juice from my one of my lime as you would get from one of your lemons. Oh, I need somebody to answer my phone for me. I'm going to add as well um, some coconut to this. So this you want uh, maybe about a tablespoon of lemon juice here. And look, if you have vegan butter, or if you make your own butter, you can always add some to, to this recipe, all right? So you could always add a nice dollop of tablespoon. Here, I'm gonna add to this two tablespoons of coconut oil. And that's just two large tablespoons I've just added. The coconut oil, as I say, it helps, it helps it with the setting to sit nicely. And I'm also gonna add some sweetener to this. And look, you can always use honey as your sweetener. It doesn't have to be um, this nectar, right? So I'm gonna just add this agar agar to the flame to get it warm a bit And my whisk. And even to this recipe, if you wish, you can add um you can add corn flour, but I'm not gonna add any any to this one. 
This is just agar agar. I'm gonna add Just to check that, so it's getting nice and warm. So, just so you can quickly see. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let me use a spoon. So it's getting thick and it's clear. So I'm gonna add it to this. And someone let in. Okay. Thank you. Right, I've got a little bit of coconut milk coming to go in this. And I'm going to add the coconut milk to use it in this bottle just to wash out this little bit here. Here's my coconut milk. I've warmed it a little bit as well. I go and put it. Okay. Try to get all the sweet goodness out of this. Okay, that looks good. And it's a stiff competition here between myself and the, so here we go. So for example, this consistency, it does seem a little bit watery, right? To me, I could add, um, for example, something that I could add to this to make it a little bit thicker is I have the powdered coconut. The taste is good, but I could personally take a little bit more sweet to it. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to add some sweetener, some more egg or egg on the grab. Actually, in this case, I'm grabbing some honey, but I'm gonna add some more coconut milk to it to make it a little bit thicker. So I've got this one here that I just warmed up and I'm gonna add the powdered coconut milk to it. And just add in half, not even half, I've just added, I don't know, maybe two tablespoons or one heap. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to it. And where's that corn? Starch. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit. So 
So what I'm adding here in terms of corn salt is about a one teaspoon or maybe a tablespoon, somewhere there about. And I've got my whisk. And I'm just let's see. So just to whisk it, you whisk it all up. And then I'm gonna put this on the flame. All right. I'm not gonna even put it for long. It's gonna thicken up really quickly. And there is a honey in it. I've got this cup ready. I'm going to use this one as well. I need something else to put in. Oh, should I just use my pan? Okay. I could just use my pan. So what I've got here, how I've done my pan is I have cut my paper like this. And so I have this, if you have the spring foam pan, that's perfect, right? But if you don't, and you would need to get this cheesecake out when it is finished, then you need to line your pan, all right? So I've lined my pan with these, and I've cut a round one to put in the bottom. And I'll show you afterwards how I do the round one. So I've got the bottom in and I've got sides in. All right. So it won't stick to the sides of the pan. Um, and then now I've got this added piece of paper, which I just put across like that. I put across like that. And what I'm going to do is when the cheesecake is finished, I will be able to... I will be able to pull the sides up and lift the cheesecake out without losing, you know, without it just, you know how cakes come out of tin sometimes, very disappointing, the half of it left inside there and then it doesn't look pretty anymore. So it will come out nicely when I do it like that. All right, I've got here my thing thickening up. And the coconut smells great. So it's nice and, and thick. I'm just gonna add this. I hope you can see from here. There we go. So that's a coconut with my honey and a bit of corn starch. And the liquid is the homemade coconut liquid. I'm gonna give this a quick blend. Now, so look, you can add some vanilla to yours. You can give it some flavoring. You can add some nutmeg. You could add some fruits to give it some color. Very nice. All right, so. This, oops, this is a much better. All right, and what I'm gonna do now, so. What I've got left here, it's not much in terms of a base to spread over the bottom of this pan. So I can always put this back in the blender, but I'm not gonna do that, all right? Or I can do the cheesecake without the base. So I can just pour the cheesecake in this, in this cup, and I can have it without the base, a baseless cheesecake. And then when it's finished, I can garnish the top 
with things like grated coconut, with cinnamon. I can just put it in my, my sieve and sift it over the top because when it's finished, you saw how jelly-like that one was. However, what I'm gonna do, just so you can see, I'm gonna try and spread this handful in the bottom of this pan to see if I could stretch it. And as I said, I could put it back in the blender. I could add more nuts to it, which I haven't got more of. And I could add, um, but I could always add something like oats, right, to it. So this base will be spread to its width, its maximum capacity. If I can get it there, that is. So basically you're just using your finger to press and push, press and push to get it out to the sides. Okay, that, that's basically what you're doing. And um, we, there is nothing more to press and push in this. It's, it's, it's reached its limits. I just need now to pour the mixture. I'll show you what I have here. Yeah. So now I'm gonna pour my mixture in. Oh, I will also just take this bit out of this cup and put it in here. So there we go, get a full base. Definitely a proper full base now. So this is not bad because this is just one um, packet of nuts which says 114 grams almond nuts. And I paid 700 and something Jamaican dollars for that just now. which is about five pounds, five, 10 pounds, one pound is 180 Jamaican dollars. So there we go, uh, we've got the base in. I'm now gonna pour an extra in. And before I pour all the mixture in, when I put this in, right, I put the bottom layer in, I just wanna to say to you this now, as it is here, you can always put some fruits in this. So if you've got strawberries, you can slice them up or you can put blueberries or alternatively you could put some nuts, but this is a stage where you can add something um, in this right here. So I am now, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna try, you can also put it to set. You can also put it to set in the fridge. So you can split it in half, put it to set. The other half that you've got left here, you could add some color to it. Now color, how are you gonna add some color? You can just put, blend this up with, let's say a handful of strawberries or a handful of blueberries, and that would give you some nice color, right? Um, where you can get a two-tone cake. So what I've got here in my hand is some of the trash from the coconut, all right? And I'm gonna mix this trash with a little cinnamon. And if you have nutmeg, that would make her evil nicer flavor. And if I had some powdered stevia, then that would go nicely as well at this time. But I'm just gonna pour a little bit in, just in at this stage. Nuts would go nicely as well. Let's see if I can find those at hand. Okay. Not really seeing them right away, but just to let you know, you can always add some nuts. And if you really like your seeds in your desserts, you could also add some seeds. Then I'm gonna pour the rest of my mixture.
And as I say, you could put it to set and then add the filling. This is quite a bit to try and get this out. So you want to put your thing to set in the fridge for about 24 hours, all right? Don't um, yield into the temptation of taking it out before because you want it to set really nicely. You want it to have that nice jiggly, yellowy consistency. Oh boy, you can never get everything out of your blender. Let's see. Can't let these good ingredients go to waste, you know? Okay. And to this, I'm going to add the rest. Of my coconut. But, you know, if you're not a coconutty trash person, you may not enjoy this. I'm just going to knock it down a little bit to get out all the air bubbles. So um, this is what it looks like. I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'm going to make some space for this in the fridge. Now, to get the chocolatey bit on, you know, the, the wake up, what I did was for this size, I would use about a tablespoon of the, 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 the coffee alternative. And I would just mix it with the rest of this soya cream. And I would probably add, I would probably use, put, probably put a little, uh, maybe one teaspoon of coconut oil. I would add as well a little um, agave or some sort of sweetener, the honey. And I would use a little liquid. So you could use water, but because I've got coconut milk that I've made from scratch, I would probably just use it to mix it um, either with the agave, I mean the agar agar, or a little of the cornstarch, put it on the fire and just swirl it around a little bit, not even a minute. You literally just want it to get warm because as soon as it get, gets warm, the agave or the cornstarch, it will, um, when, you, when it cools down, it will thicken. But while it is hot, I would pour it on the top of this and then put it in the fridge to set. Okay, I hope that helped. And I've already showed you the finished product for this type of cheesecake. It's the jiggly type of cheesecake. So I'm gonna put this in my fridge, but I'm not gonna make anything more to go on the top of it. More than maybe I'll just um, sprinkle a little cinnamon, just a presentation. And if I had some strawberries, something nice and red, it would be nice to just put some on the top because then it would go really nicely with the white. Oops, mint has come to an end there. Okay, I don't know if you can see what's happening here. I'm not hearing from anybody, so I don't know if I'm the only one left online. Looking well. Looking well. 
Okay, all right. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and I'm just gonna show you the finished product again. Well, the finished product should come out like. So here we go. The finished product. It makes a really good quality cheesecake. Yeah. So I I will taste it for you. <laughs> <laughs> <Not cheating. laughs> and that's a big that piece as nice. well. Goodness, looks good. <laughs> oh, watering, goodness. Mm. Oh. Sonia, you should come over. <laughs> that looks yummy. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody wants to try to make a flaxseed flatbread or when you come to the course? I think we've just about exhausted the time. What time is it? You've got 20 minutes to six o'clock, is it? I'm talking to those in the UK. Yes, yes, 20 to six. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Davina, you know, they have a product by the name of Yarrow Root. You can use that as well. Um, yes. Instead of the... Um, Agar. Flower. Mm -hmm. And mm. the agar, agar, yeah. Mm. So you have tapioca starch. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to the course, mm. you will learn about some amazing ingredients. I don't know if you know about aquafaba. I'm going to unpin myself and I'm going to sit down and we're going to talk. I'm not going to cook anything more because my kitchen looks like a bomb. <laughs> I can't find how to unpin me. I will walk with I will walk with my dessert. Now I'll tell you a little bit. Yeah, so you will learn about some amazing ingredients and how you can utilize them in your kitchen. Ingredients that you probably have had in your cupboard for years and you did not realize that um, can be used for that purpose. In fact, some things you might have always just literally thrown away. So I don't know if any of my past students are on the line who just wants to give a little say about how they use aquafaba. And what aquafaba is, is um, any bean water. The best consistency, <laughs> the best quality one to use is from the chickpeas. But aquafaba is the water from any cooked beans, and it can be used as an egg replacement um, in almost every dish except probably souffles because it needs a stronger consistency to get the souffle going. Now, Sandra, I can see you're on the screen. Yes. <laughs> Tell us one of the ways how you use your aquafaba. Iceland. She, Sandra uses it for icing. So Sandra is a professional baker where you can get your Christmas fruit cake, you can get your wedding cakes, your birthday cakes and stuff like that done. And she did the course and um, her family keeps eating away her vegan food. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and she uses the aquafaba to make her icing for her cakes. Now, you can use it to thicken your gravies, your soups, your sauces as well. Those are simple ways. We also use it to make omelets, we use it to make frittata, we use it to make Spanish omelet. We use it, the aquafaba as whipped cream. We use it in so many ways, in so many recipes. Another ingredient is psyllium husk, which I know most of us use um, for digestive disorders. Now, this is the most amazing way how to get your medicine in your food. <laughs> so we use the psyllium husk to um, 
it's it's a very it's a soluble fiber and it uses to make we use it to make our own vegan meat from scratch uh -huh. right but the psyllium husk so we make bologna we make roast we make sausages stuff like that with it so the flaxseed as well we use to make um tortillas um we use it to make bread like your sliced bread it looks very much like your whole wheat bread um the taste is good i made a, an amazing garlic bread which i i want to save for this demonstration today but i ate the garlic bread this morning <laughs> i ate the garlic bread this morning it was so good but um, if you sign up to the course you will learn how to do some of these things um Anybody here that has done the course before that just wants to share a little testimonial? So to encourage those who have not signed up as yet. Yes, I can say something. Thank you. I know I've put you all on the spot, but um, <laughs> let the truth flow. <laughs> Sorry, it's dark where I am. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you're not going to regret this course. It just uplifted my cooking. I thought I knew how to cook, but it was just nothing when Devina started. It was amazing. The Amen. whole family. And I've lost weight just through all the food stuff I've been eating. It's wow. not only the sake of cooking. It also it regenerates your health, well-being. Yeah. Lots of recipes now that we're going to learn and it's going to be uplifting the whole of your family. They will like it. You'll never, never regret. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else? Also a combination of foods. Mm -hmm. What about combination of foods, um, Sandra? Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> How to combine certain foods and certain foods is not supposed to be combined together and eaten. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Loy? I really got through it. Okay, Loy, I can see you're online. You want to give a word? Let me look who else is online. I know Loy. <laughs> Afternoon, Loy. We, we, we're not hearing you very well, though. You sound. So oh, I'm going to remove my Any better? Yes, perfect. We can hear you now. Okay, great. So I think the thing I took away from the course when I did it was um and I I was privileged to to take it the last time you ran it and I I was appreciative of the fact that I discovered more than two ways to use beans. <laughs> yes. So that was that was brilliant. Uh, you know, especially as we are encouraged to include more pulses in our diet. It was nice to know that you didn't just have to make a bean stew. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just didn't have to make a bean burger. And that wasn't the two things that you could do with it. And you could do so many other interesting um, recipes and you could almost hide them really in other dishes but have the benefit exactly to ensure you're having enough but it's not like you're you're laboring your family with having to think okay beans again you know so that was that was lovely thank you Lois. yeah because we yeah. look at we we show you different ways how you can include beans in your diet from your breakfast to your dessert yeah. Okay, Faye, you've got your hand raised. Yes, hi, Davina. Hello, Faye. Mm -hmm. Hello. It might be a crazy question, this, but you know these um, cheesecake? Mm -hmm. Calories. What are the calories, if any, are in... Oh, in, in, Faye, I don't know. I don't count calories. <laughs> <laughs> I never did. It's it just Faye, it's maths. Yeah. I still have not passed CXC maths, so I don't worry about calories. But okay. we all learn on this course how to eat healthy, and we never ever count any calories. So come to the course, and you will learn secret of how to eat healthy without worrying about this, that, 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 that. Um, yeah. 
And you will lose the weight. As you hear, um, Sister Ruth is saying that she has lost weight. And I'm telling you, yeah. I'm coming from a size 22, 24 UK and size, I and I'm now a size bad. 8, 10 UK. And I mean, mm. and I'm, 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 I, I, do I look unhealthy? No, you look great. No, girl. exactly. My skin glows. Um, mm -hmm. I come and everybody just looking at me, ask me, what do you use on your skin? I use water from the top and that only I use. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. Take You're care. welcome. Yeah, I just different. want to quickly Great. say, just want to quickly, oh, oh yeah. just in case awesome. someone's hands up, awesome. just want to quickly say that um, being a, a naturopath nutritional therapist myself and the beauty and of course how the body needs nutrients, just backing up in, um, in what um, mm -hmm. Lois was saying earlier, that there's so many ways to have beans and you just, and you know, doing the scores as well, which I've done it myself too, I, you know, I always show up just for the food. Yeah. And <laughs> it's very, very creative. As and, her tagline. You know, yes. I'm always here just for the food. Um, but she's very, very creative in how mm -hmm. she can turn just simple ingredients into mouth-watering dishes. So mm -hmm. for those on here who are thinking about the course, you won't be disappointed at all. Amen. From, as she said, she teach her to make butter, all sorts. So you're not missing the other stuff if you're on a transition in um, eating more healthy food. There's no regrets at all. None whatsoever. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> um, anybody else wants to say anything? There was somebody else. Thank you very much, Sonia. That yeah, was very yeah. kind. I was thinking about the grains to make the loaf and the grain burger. Oh, yeah, the grain loaf, the grain roast. Um, the another burger. amazing one, how to get your ancient grains in your diet. And, you know, recently when we had the lockdown in the UK and you went in the supermarket and you could not get bread, you could not get a lot of the major staples to buy. I went in the supermarket and I went to my section and it was loaded. It had everything <laughs> except toilet paper. Um, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is there are so many grains out there that people don't know about that are rich in nutritional content. They are superfoods. They're rich in antioxidants. People don't know how to use them. They don't know what they're even called. They look at it as like, what is our healthy looking stuff? And that's it. And it's put back or they bite and it stays in their cupboard, right? You come to this class and you learn how to incorporate these healthy grains in your diet. There are testimonials when people eat some of these food, they come back and they tell how much it has sorted their guts out, you know? Um, so you don't only learn to prepare the food as well at the class, but you do learn the nutritional content, the nutritional value of the food. And as for Sonia, who is a naturopathic nutritionist, she don't need to learn that bit. In fact, we both went to the same school and she's my senior. So she don't need to learn a thing at all from me about that nutritional bit. So she turns up for the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth so, yeah I'm so i have to say i have to say as well that you know i'm i'm using more and more of those grains that i didn't know what to do with and uh my children uh, normally do not like my cooking but then when i when i cook some of the things that i have learned I sometimes not, I don't get to taste the food that I have cooked because Amen. <laughs> by, the time, by the time we sit down, you know, it's all gone. So, That's fantastic. Yeah. So I've got my, my children eating at my hand now, which they never used to do. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's good, Namsa. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, Oh, can I just quickly add? Oh, yes, please, Dama. All I can add to what the ladies have already said is I am so, I was amazed at the amount of the, the variety of vegan dishes. I believe there's far more vegan dishes than there are meat dishes. Mm -hmm. All to the Venus creativity. Praise the Lord. You me a lot. Yeah. Excellent. You, you've educated me in, the, in, in that field. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, just want to say, so there are, what, two courses, three courses being advertised? Um, <laughs> Juliet, I hope you will help me with this information because I haven't got my notes in front of me, but let me just see if I can get the dates correct here. Juliet, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. All right, brilliant. So you will chip in and help me out. So we've got starting on the 23rd of this month, November, um, to the 13th of December, the Transition Nutrition, which is now called the Vegan Nutrition, right? So the name has been changed to Vegan Nutrition. But if you want to call it Transition Nutrition, that is fine. It is the same course, but it was <laughs> recommended that I change the name because it has a lot about nutrition in it. And when people hear Transition Nutrition, um, it doesn't necessarily appeal to those who are already vegans because they believe it's just for those who are non-vegans and want to transition. But it, it, it's ideal for vegan, especially if you don't know much about nutrition and how to get your minerals and your nutrients, a nutrient dense diet that actually tastes good. Because one of the main problems is what I see when I go to church potluck is a vegetarian cuisine that puts people off from vegetarian food, right? <laughs> It looks unappealing and it tastes horrible. That's what I normally see at church potluck and you're afraid to eat and you sometimes just eat out of courtesy to, to show respect and politeness and hospitality basically. So this course helps you to transform your family's life, your own health and um, your, your dinners. Like for example, your church potluck, when you bring a food there, it impresses those who are non-vegans and those who are vegans and struggling or those who are even vegan are at the top of their game. It, it wows them. And um, you want to introduce someone to, to a plant-based diet who are very skeptical because you've got a lot of people out there, they know that it's the best way, but they're very skeptical because I think you just eat grass. Um, this is a course that you can introduce them to. It will wow them. And as for you yourself, it will also, um, you know, impress you as well, no matter what level you're at and how much you already know. And I mean, it does even change my very own life where I eat too much. <laughs> now, so the, the name is now Vegan Nutrition. It's a three week intense course. So when you come to class, it starts with, we go through the nutritional content and then we go into the kitchen. Students are required to cook. So when you go into your kitchen, you're grabbing your ingredients. I may be demonstrating or we may have a, a guest presenter who will be doing the dish, um, demonstrating the dish. You will be um, expected to be following in your kitchen as well. Now with this course, we also go like, so what is in your cupboard? So I may have um, glutinous rice flour using in a recipe, but you have no clue where to find that in your community. Or uh, you may have tried and you just did not find it or you never ever get a chance to go shopping. It's like, okay, what have you got in your cupboard? So we check what you've got in your cupboard and what you could substitute in its place. So you learn so much at that very point in time. And uh, you're there doing it and you're like, okay, can I put it in the oven now? Is this what the consistency is supposed to look like? I'm here, I'm looking and I can say, okay, no, you may need to add a little bit more of this in it or add a little bit more of that, you know, and that's so it's like I'm in your kitchen with you, but I'm actually in my own kitchen. So you get that one-to-one -one guidance, personal tutoring, and then there is a group with all the students in it. So at the end of the class, whatever you prepare, you have to take a picture and you post it in a group with the recipe that you have followed. So for example, let's say the day when we're doing cheesecake, um, I will come with maybe four or five different types of recipes and I'm gonna only demonstrate one, but I'm gonna talk you through others, right? So you may want to do your cheesecake from chickpeas and I'm gonna recommend that somebody else do their cheesecake from lentils. Somebody else is gonna do theirs from the cashew and somebody else is gonna do theirs from tofu and somebody else is even gonna do theirs with the steamed tofu. Right? So in one class, day of one class, you may have six different cheesecakes being baked at the same time. So I'm gonna talk you through. So tell me she's got chickpeas. Um, Jenny, you've got maybe um, soya beans, you know? Loy has cashew, or you may have just almonds, but we work it 
with what you've got in your cupboard. Now, because, um, you know, I may have wanted to do the, the cashew one as well, or I may wanted to do the baked cheesecake as well, but I actually did the no bake um, jiggly tofu cheesecake in the class, but I like the one that Telma did. Now, Telma is actually gonna post her recipe with her pictures. So you have it there that you can go back and look at and see, okay, so this is what Telma did. So I did this one today, but next weekend, I'm gonna do this one for my family and I'm gonna give that one a try. And you've got it right there, what Telma did, and you can look at it and you can follow it. You're in a group, so you've got that support as well. So you can always ask questions, how did you do this? And I'm there, I will give, I will chip in when I see the wrong answer comes up on the screen or the answer does not come up on the screen and I will say, okay, this is what you do. But the support is right there, right? The group support. Um, so when you come to a class for cheesecake, you don't only learn one cheesecake and go away. Like today you learn two types of cheesecake and uh, this is cheesecake that you can go away and you can make, you can put your money on it. This, you can make this and you can sell this, right? So, you can get your clients, you can make this for birthdays, you can make this for weddings, you can make this, we, we don't want to say for funerals, but you can make this for anywhere where people are gathering and you can make money from this. So this is good quality stuff. Um, we're going to do like the Jamaican fruit cake that we use for weddings. We're going to do the vegan version of that where you don't need to touch anything called alcohol. And Marie, are you here? I, I must say, um, I am really here. I am here. Yeah. I don't know if Marie remembers when I just um, became Christian back in 2015. I and I was doing the cakes, right? I went to Marie to sell her cake. And I told her, I said to her, so she ordered cake for herself and for her family and for her workplace. And I said to her, okay, so which one do you want? Do you want the rum cake? Or <laughs> Are the Adventist cake? And I don't know if you remember Marie, but Marie rebuked me. <laughs> Marie rebuked me. And that really um, made a change then to my ministry because it's like the Lord spoke to me through her, right? That I shouldn't be using the rum to make the cake. And then so I had the rum cake and I had the Adventist cake. And then from that time onward, I changed my recipes and I practiced it and perfected it where I make only Adventist cake and when I sell the Adventist cake to the rum heads they don't know the difference because when I go to my mm -hmm. restaurants that I used to sell to I didn't even tell them that there is a change and they don't know that there has been a change in the recipe Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just to say Marie thank you for doing the you know correcting reproofing in love back then um in, in 2015 when i had just gotten baptized and today i will not today but as a part of this course as a christmas bonus because i always call that recipe my secret recipe right and i don't normally share that recipe with anyone but for the for um the this holiday season the course whoever signs up to this course i will run that session where you will be taught how to make that cake and I'm telling you that cake is, is um, this quality that you sell, right? Mm. The quality that I do for weddings that I get orders for every Christmas. And for somebody who is in the UK who wants to service the customers that I normally service every year that always place their orders. Um, and normally they would have, they would have ordered like um, in November now because for the past few years, I normally go to Jamaica or America for the whole month of December. I normally leave by the first or the second of December and I'm away for the whole month. So those who wanted their food cake would order it before and their food fruit cake would go and stay in their fridge and it would last them for a period. Um, and I do the, we do as well the gluten-free um, vegan fruit cake. Absolutely fantastic. You're also gonna learn for this season how to make, what do Christians eat? I mean, not Christians, what do vegans eat at Christmas? I mean, we don't celebrate Christmas, but we may have families and stuff coming over and we may be used to something where we would do a roast or something like that, where you do your, 
what, what, what is it you do? A roast chicken with some stuffings and this, that, 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 that. Um, your family may be used to that and you may want to give them something different this year as we're all trying to move forward in terms of health and we, we just want something to replace that. And obviously a roast is something that you're not only going to do only on holiday times, but you will do this right, right. You know, especially on for Sabbath dinners, you may have a roast ready or other holidays, you know, when you're home and you have the time in the kitchen and you want to have a good time, you may want to do a roast dinner. So this is, um, we're throwing in this bonus in the course, how to do the roast. So that's what a vegan nutrition course. Now we have the advanced, um, the advanced um, transition nutrition course. And this is basically, it's, it's mostly geared toward those who have already completed the transition nutrition. And that's because they would have covered so many things already. So when I say aquafaba, when I say make some whipped cream from aquafaba, they know exactly the um, quantity and what the texture, what it is supposed to look like. They know right away. So I don't have to teach them from scratch how to make whipped cream from aquafaba to use on a recipe, right? Because the one week, the one week of masterclass, it's gonna be intense. And what that one is, you see, for example, how I plated up the dessert in the little cup, the little individual cup. So if you're gonna have something like, so at New Ball, we did a lot of, um, I did a lot of dinner parties, right? I call them dinner parties. So they may be having, I don't know, let's say, um, they're celebrating 100 year of something or they're having some big meeting or something like that. And you have the, the directors and all sorts of people from the conference and TED and wherever come in, they will have events where I have to do finger foods. So it's a lot of little food. It's a room spread, a big table spread with just food. And they just, while they talk and network or do whatever they're doing, they have food they can just pick up and, and eat, with, that they can eat with their hands. They don't need to sit at the table with a knife and fork to eat, just finger food. So the course, the one week intense course, masterclass is about finger food. So one of the things about finger food is that you eat it with your eyes. It must look so attractive that your mouth must water from it. And if you notice the flyer that I've sent around, the picture that you see on it is from one of the events that I catered for there um, at New Bowl with all finger food. It's making, even though sometimes the food is very simple, it's just to bring out um, the artists. The, it's just to bring out the beauty in the food. It's just to make it into something that you would never, you would never expect it to be. So for example, let me give you an example of something. So, let's say you buy some vegan sausages. They're about, um, a sausage is about how much inches long? It's probably about uh, six inches long. <laughs> you say a normal vegan sausage is about five, six inches long. You would cut one of those vegan sausage in, let's say three, right? And I'm gonna just tell you two ways how you could use these vegan sausage or even three ways. So you would cut one in three, you would take a toothpick, you would stick it in that sausage, right? Now that sausage, you can whip up some barbecue sauce and you can stick that sausage in the barbecue sauce. You can then put that sausage. So the toothpicks you would need to soak firstly overnight, right? Otherwise, otherwise they will burn. Soak them in water overnight. Then um, you would stick that sausage now in the oven with the toothpick on it, right? And then you would sprinkle as well some white sesame seeds onto that nice brown red barbecue. When that is finished, that barbecue is gonna sort of like caramelize onto the sausage. <clears throat> when you come out and you put that on a nice white doily paper on a tray or in some nice like a fancy plate and you put all those sausages together, it just makes like a wow. And somebody comes, and they pick up one of those, it just like, it just literally just blows them away because they're wondering, what is that? And it's just a typical vegan sausage that you would buy, but you'd probably buy that and you'd eat it for breakfast. You would probably never cut one in three to use it as a little finger food in um, a little party event. Again, you can make something like what they call pigs in blanket. 
you're going to make something, a mock of it, right? So what you're going to do, you're going to get like a food, a vegetable peeler, and you're going to peel your carrots with the vegetable peeler down until you get some nice ribbons. And you're going to do the very same thing with your cucumber, right? Peel it down with the vegetable peeler and get some ribbons. And the sausage, again, you're going to maybe cut one sausage in half. And you're going to season your sausage nicely, maybe with even a little Cajun spice mix, maybe even in your barbecue if you want. And you're going to wrap your cucumber around the sausage. And then you're going to wrap your carrot ribbon around the cucumber. At the top, you're going to have, when you look at that from above, you're going to see the red color from the sausage. You're going to see the green and white cucumber. And then you're going to see on the outside, the orange um, carrots. You're going to stick a toothpick in that. And on top of that toothpick, you could stick a half of um, cherry tomato to help to hold it. Or you could use um, dill, is it dill? Chive, chive. Or you could use a chive to tie that, you to, know, to make a ribbon and, and tie that to hold it together that you serve as it is you serve as it is and it just looks absolutely fantastic it just looks amazing it just like wow literally will blow your guests away so that is what the one week intense um master class is about it's about finger food how to make that wow effect at your parties learning different party foods which people use sometimes as starters it's it's just making the most of your ingredients. Then what we have now, so the 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 one week masterclass. What's the date of it again, Juliet? Oh, hold on, keep talking. I look on my um flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your flyer. And then now coming next year, January. I think in January, or uh, yeah, I think close to the end of January, we have the vegan Trishan again. But it's now on the UK time. So this one that is going to happen in November is on the, the, you can say Caribbean time, but this is where those who are in the US, those who are in the Caribbean, those who are in Canada will find this time will be most convenient for these persons. And then now in January, we're going to have the transition nutrition running again, but this time with an added bonus. So you won't get the Christmas food to it this time, but you will get the detox. <laughs> it, will, uh, it will be all about recipes to help you detox from the holiday festive season, especially for those who may have gone a little bit overboard. Um, That's not fair. We want the, 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 the Christmas goodie in the January one as well. You want, <laughs> you, know, you want the Christmas bonus still? But you know, for the for the um the masterclass, the I'm gonna throw the Christmas good in the masterclass as well, because my past students they would kill me if I don't do that, uh, <laughs> right? So th there there will be that day when we're gonna do the Christmas roast and everything, right? Um for the for the masterclass and. Uh, this is on 4 to 7 p.m. UK time. So those who are in the UK can also join in that class. Even if you didn't do, or if you want, you can always do the, um, the vegan nutrition that is coming now. Do it, and then that will make you move into the masterclass. You will be more comfortable to move into the masterclass because things like aquafaba, you would have known how to use, you know, it will be easy. You have mastered the art of whipping it up and getting it to foam and getting it to, to even, you know, to be stiff and stuff like that. How to use it as an egg replacement in different dishes. You would have learned, you know, you would have learned how to make your omelets from your chickpeas and stuff like that. And to make your cakes. So then, because, you know, we would literally just be moving from, we, we, we're not going to be teaching you how to make a cake in the class in the masterclass because that you would have already learned how to make your cake. So, you know, when you're coming to class, you would, you would have had your cake already made, but you're coming now to present this cake, how to use a cookie cutter to get some amazing looking little things on your, on, you know, from your, your cake that was a big blob before, you know, it's a little bit like that. You'll be making some things from scratch, but certain things that we have covered, 
we, we are not going to go into detail into it. And that class doesn't have any nutritional information. You know, it's, it's about the food. It's not about the nutrition. It's about the food and about the presentation. It's about what we your guests. So what, the, what's the date from the 21st of November to then? Is it 21st or 23rd? 23rd of November to, to when? 13th of December. No, the classes are recorded, right? So if you miss the class, you watch the recording. Just that you, I don't know what it is like to sit and watch one of the recordings because I've never done it. Um, but then I think there's probably a speed button there where you could speed it up to see the part that you want to see. And again, I guess it's probably good because you can stop and you can rewind, but the videos will be there just that it will be a Zoom recording. So you're seeing, you know, the whole thing, but you have it, the full length of the class you can watch in your time and practice your recipe in your time. And what day is that for you, Thursday? What it's day? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m. And then Fridays, it's normally 8 to 11 a.m. It's in the morning because when we come out of the kitchen on Sabbaths, you... On Fridays, you have everything ready for Sabbath dinner to wow your husband or your wife or your children or your guests. <laughs> everything is ready. All you need to do is wash up and put your stuff in your fridge. You don't need to go back in the kitchen. So you said 4 to 7 p.m.? Yeah, 4 to 7 p.m. No, but that's Jamaican time. So Marie... That's uh, what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, it's 4 to 7 p.m. Jamaican time. You're not there. So I'm going to send it to her because I am, she want to. Oh, Marisha. Okay, okay, okay. Not Marisha, my friend, a friend of mine. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the dates for the v, um, for the advanced masterclass is December, is, I'm sorry, the 14th of December to the 20th of December. Um, and that's 4 that's to 7 p.m. Now, those of us who are in the, I'm talking for the US Virgin Islanders and those in America, I know a friend of mine, she's one hour behind me. Um, so whatever, whatever the, it's like today, you started at 12 o'clock. Um, so you started at four o'clock, which was 12 o'clock our time. So we are four hours US VI, we're four hours behind um, Davina. So when she says four o'clock, they're starting in Jamaica, we're actually starting at five o'clock because Jamaica is one hour behind. So she's working okay. on British time at the moment, but um, she's actually operating um, today. Um, she's operating from Jamaica. So they, um, we're, 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 um, so we're four hours behind England and we're one hour behind Jamaica. Okay, so that's for one hour, yes, one hour in front of Jamaica, sorry. So yeah, when it's four for you, it's five for us. Okay. All right. Um, so as soon as I get myself settled properly in Jamaica, then I will probably just run cooking morning and evening, morning and evening, morning and evening. <laughs> but at the moment, I need to run just one time for, for the day so I can actually go out and um, scout out other business opportunities, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Now, was there anything else I wanted to say to this group? Is there any more, are, have you got any questions? Oh, so I wanted to say, I do know, right? And understand that we're going through trying times financially and very unsure times as well. Um, this course, it's coming down from 250 pounds to 150 pounds, right? And uh, I, in the interest with everything that is happening, you can pay, if you don't have it to pay everything in one go, you can pay 50 pounds per month, right? If you need to pay less than that, then you need to talk to me. Um, but as long as you're faithful with your payment, because this is also how I live, I'm happy to accept the payment plan, but just don't forget me after the course is finished. <laughs> um, the course is a certificated course. It's, it's 45 CPD points, continued professional development, which will look really nice on your CV, if you're looking for a job that is. But this course is designed 
to help you optimize your family's life and your personal life, right? However, students that have come here have used it to develop a career out of it, but that was never the intention. But that's a good thing that can come out of it. Um, someone has started their own um, food production line out of it. So that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm saying to you, whatever you learn here, pray about it and take it to the next level. See how the Lord wants you to use it, but don't just keep it to yourself and to your family, but use it to help others. Use it as, um, you know, not all of us can preach like Paul, you know, but if you learn how to cook, I must let you know that this is a part of the health ministry and it is the entering wedge. And I said to people, when, <laughs> if I knock on a stranger's door and I say to them, I'm offering a free vegan cooking course or a free health transformation cooking course, and then somebody else knock on their door and say, I'm offering you a great controversy or even a steps to Christ, the person is going to let me in first. Are they more likely to let me in to their house than they are to let somebody else in who says Christ or great controversy? When, when you enter somebody's house, when you're teaching them how to cook, they warm to you because you're feeding them. They warm to you. They're very kind to you. They will listen to you as well. And you can now talk to people about how to change their health. And when people change their health and they start seeing the benefits, you have the platform in front of you to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Then when you give them a great controversy and you give them a steps to Christ, you can almost rest assured that it is not gonna be put down on a shelf, but it will be read. So what I'm saying is in Ellen White's writing, she says that cooking is actually the greatest gift given to man from God. But I know a lot of times people look down at cooking as the least of the gifts. And we think that preaching is the greatest of the gifts. But I can tell you the cooking, it's the way to a man's soul. It's the way to a man's heart. Um, <laughs> so this, um, it's good to have this as an addition to your medical missionary ministry, or this can be your medical missionary ministry, but you just need to understand the whole, you still need, it's always still good to understand um, the anatomy and physiology of the human body system. And um, that is a course that Sister Sonia will come up with very soon. Um, <laughs> right so that you could do to learn that aspect of it and then you have your food right here that you go into your client's home and so they're having a headache and you're going to say to them maybe you need some magnesium so let me teach you how to make a vegan pesto and and this is how i'm going to teach you how to make the pesto from scratch so you don't have to buy the one in the shop with all the additives and eat this and eat that in it right um that a lot of these East stuff, you would never believe the origin where they're coming from. Some of them from pigs here, pigs feet, <laughs> um, you know, stomach of calves and stuff like that. Some of these things, right? So you're going to say to them, let me teach you how to make this from scratch. So you can, you can have it without the chemicals and the additives that are probably adding to your headache or your Alzheimer's, you know, or your cancer and stuff like that. And then you teach them how to make the pesto. And then you're going to teach them how to use pesto, different dishes, how they can use pesto. Let me teach you how to make a creamy pesto pasta. There is no cream in it, but it is a creamy pesto pasta, right? There is no cheese in it. There is no hard cheese in it. It's pure plant-based whole food. And you're making it in your own kitchen you're gonna wow them and it's gonna taste good and it's gonna look good and they're gonna love you so cookie like louise who loves to cook and who loves to drive around the community and help those who are in need this course is 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 for people like she this course is for those who are in community outreach this course is for those who want to do the work underground to reach the poor to reach the homeless so 
you cook up a big batch of something and you share it out into small containers coming this Christmas season, something that you learn from this course that you know you can prepare in bulk and that will be cheap. You make it, you cut it up into small takeaway containers and you put a little side on it and you go out in your community and you give it to the poor. You go out early in the morning before they wake up from their spot where they're sleeping, the homeless, and you put it at their heads. And the Lord will bless your ministry. In no time, you will see your ministry reach the places you have never dreamed of, imagined, thought of, expected. And no, sometimes, I Davina, we have to look at ourselves. And I know I'm looking at myself and what inspired me to do the course. I've not done Davina's course yet, but I had the opportunity of sitting in on two sessions. And I was sitting in on the nutrition side and then realized that, well, not that I didn't realize before, but it just um, empowered me more to think about how I was combining my foods that um, thinking, you know, I was, I've been a vegetarian since as long as I can remember as a, as a, as a child growing up, but um, wrong combinations over a long time has led to a variety of diseases, which I should not have had if I'm a good vegetarian from the time I've been at high school. So, um, so I'm having to now um, undo some of the damage that um, I have caused to myself. Um, and weight gain was one of those because you are so, so much into um, carbohydrate filled foods, um, pre-diabetes. Mm -hmm. I noticed somebody asked about will this um, support diabetes? And um, so I'll hand that over to you, but uh, you know, for, for me. Yes, it will. Right. So if you're eating well and you're eating balanced and you're, you're giving the body the nutrition that it needs, you're feeding the cells, because that's, whenever we eat, it's about feeding the cells. So if we're overcooking, if we're not combining well, if the body isn't absorbing the food, then it, it serves no purpose. So it's best to eat less and good than to eat lots and it's rubbish food. So True. that's the reason why I'm joining. Um, as I said, I've not done the course, but I sat in on two courses. And, was blown away on the nutrition side. And everybody knows me or my friends know I'm not the greatest of cooks. So <laughs> this will be um, a real good eye opener. I'm, I'm, your two, I'm, your, I'm like the lady with beans, two, two different uses. Okay, let's go. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to um, having a variety. And as, as, as well as the last thing I just want to add into this is that, you know, we, we in the Virgin Islands and all over the world, we've, we've gone through lockdown. And in my readings, it talked about um, the best foods for us to eat is the natural foods that you go out and you pick your mangoes and your, your lemons and so forth. And then the next level of foods that we need to, to hold on to are those beans and those pulses. Um, and particularly when I was reading, it talked about having those available for when food is, is in, yes. in scarcity. So when food was in scarcity, and I can tell you now, my cupboard is full of every kind of bean you can think of, but have I yeah. done anything with it? No. So um, <laughs> this is going to be great because as we move forward, um, and it's cheap. It's highly nutritious and, and it's, it's cheap. cheap. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, even this morning on um, AGMM, we talked about um, sprouting, even sprouting some of those, mm -hmm. um, those, um, um, those, those beans. And so, so I just want to just put it out there in terms of our health and moving forward as we're seeing the scarcity of food, how we can put foods together very cheaply and very nutritiously. That's me. Exactly. Thank you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Hello. Just to ask, um, hi. For beginners like me, uh, would there be additional cost in terms of like utensils or food? Because I don't think I have anything in the kubo. <laughs> and I know that it's very expensive, that kind of stuff, vegan stuff. All right. Let me tell you something. When you're starting out, it, mm -hmm. it will feel expensive because you outlay, right? Especially if you're making like an overnight switch. Like some people do make an overnight switch. Like today, they just decide that this is it. I'm not eating any more meat. And they go to the shops and they buy all healthy food. So for a situation like that, it's expensive to start out the outlay. However, 
for people who transition step by step slowly into it, you don't really feel the cost because as you remove something, you replace it sort of, so to speak. However, in general, when I check out the balance between, in terms of cost between a vegan, a whole food plant-based lifestyle and a meat lifestyle that I used to have, it's worked out cheaper for me being a vegan. So much cheaper. And I will explain to you why. Because when I um, eat beans, I can cook a cup of beans and it's gonna double in portion. And that's, that's probably gonna serve me maybe two days if you're a small stomach. Um, <laughs> but um, I couldn't eat just one chicken breast when I used to eat chicken, unless it's a big chicken breast. And it definitely, <laughs> and it definitely was not going to serve me two days, right? And that's just one portion of it. But it, it works out in the long run cheaper to be a vegan, right? As long as you're not looking for a lot of the vegan processed foods, like as long as you're not going to buy burgers and buy vegan mm -hmm. sausages and buy the vegan veggie meat, as long as you're not doing that, it will work out cheaper because those things are what is expensive because you will get like a little packet of 250 gram for like mm -hmm. five, five pounds. So that works out expensive. But um, when you go whole food plant-based where you're looking at variety of beans, you buy um, a big packet of beans for maybe one kilo of beans for like maybe one pound 20, one pound 50 in the Asian shops. Am I right? Others oh. are buying these things? Yep, that's right. Yeah, and the beans serve you a long time. You can't eat of one kilo of beans, but you could eat buy one kilo of chicken and eat that in one meal. So it works out cheaper in the long run. And not only that, but because they're so fiber rich, what you will find, right? So. Sorry, I'm not going to say this is going to happen on day one, but what you will find um, over a period of time is when you eat so much fiber rich food and you start chewing your food thoroughly and not cutting and swallowing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and you have all your fibers in your meal, you will find that you actually eat less or even yes, whatever you eat, it now holds you until longer. So you will find that you you are satisfied, fully satisfied with two meals per day. When as in now on a meat diet, you will need three meals per day and you're still eating between meals. So you will find that you will have breakfast, you will have lunch at work. And when you come home, you will have dinner and you will pick up a fruit and you will eat the fruit in between. You probably will buy a biscuit, have that in your bag that you will eat at some point in between as well. Um, you will find that you snack on things. When you come to this course, you also learn how to eat two meals for the day and stay full for the whole day. Yeah, I'm, I'm already doing that because I just done um, Michelle's course. Okay, okay. The okay. one that she's just finished in England. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I've kind of like transitioned, but I'm getting bored with beans, 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 beans. <laughs> I try to cook, I try to cook lentils they ended up being so <laughs> <Abigail>. <laughs> I had to blend them and make soup because and then I said oh because I thought they would take long like beans and then the next time I said oh I'll just do them for 30 minutes, minutes and they're ready I still have them in the freezer now what keep them I in there keep, them keep them in there overcooked. don't throw them away keep them in there we're going to teach you how to turn those lentils into a roast oh Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or into a cake or into bread. Keep them right there. All right. Yeah, I really, I really need to do some cooking if I'm going to stay as a vegan. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll do a runner. <laughs> Mr. Davina, have you all started long time? Sorry, good evening. Yes, we're, fin we're finished, basically. We're just saying farewells. <laughs> no, but Sister Davina, that's not fair. I sent you a message. I, I have been asking you. The link. That's not fair. What, sorry, what where was have I? you been, Judith? <laughs> yes, listen, Sister Davina, you said this morning it's two o'clock Jamaica time. Two o'clock Jamaica time is six o'clock our time, isn't it? Uh, what did I you say? I said 4 p.m. UK time. 
No, if you said 4 p.m., you can tell me I would not go and sleep and get up. Oh. I... <laughs> Come on. I, I knew been... it. You were sleeping, no, Gigi. <laughs> no, no, no. I have been naughty. I have been. I have not been sleeping properly at night. So I try to catch a bit of sleep. This is it. Seriously, I have been waiting, and I was like, "What's happening?" Well, the first, the first thing is, it's it's recorded, so um, right. you'll be able to get the recording, and you'll be able to look at some of those recipes that was. Um, it is, but the yeah. project. Okay. No, but that, know, I'm, I'm only able to do the test, unfortunately. Sorry, um. That's why I wonder what was suggest. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm going here. I'm sending you the YouTube link in the chat. All right. There you oh, go. No. The YouTube That's link. So right you number. can't just rewatch it now on YouTube. <laughs> no. Do you have the numbers? <laughs> All right, Sister Davina. Thank you very yeah. much. You're I'm welcome. Gonna... Actually, I'm going to stop the recording um, because yeah. I, I yeah. think the main point is. Abigail, you need to mute your mic, please. Thank you. Sorry. So, what what you're 